Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. Um, this time what we have is a small machining job for one of the local agricultural society, uh, muse you know, one of the museum pieces. Um, and I also have some exciting news. To start with, uh, I'll get to the exciting news. Uh, I actually got over a thousand, just over a thousand subscribers now. Um, I don't know, I, I'm having fun with this. Uh, I realize the number of subscribers isn't the be all and end all to a channel because I've seen some really good channels that seem to be going unnoticed for some unknown reason. One of the fun things about having a thousand subscribers is that it does open up opportunities for other things that uh, I wasn't able to do before. Um, one of those is the YouTube Partner Program. Um, I'm not looking to monetize videos anytime soon. If you see ads come up on my videos, it's YouTube doing something, not me. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't make enough off of ad revenues to make it worth irritating the people who actually want to come hang out here. So, for what it's worth, it's not in the game plan anytime soon. Um, but it is kind of fun, and uh, if you're coming across here and you haven't subscribed, hey, sign on. That'd be fun. Don't have to if you don't want to. It's fine. Now, with that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of a tool giveaway. Again, nothing huge. I'm also not really a huge channel. But... I have a 12 inch STM uh, dial caliper here. It's in really, really good shape. Uh, works very well. And uh, like I say, it, it's, it may not be brand new, but it's in really, really good shape. Uh, all you have to do, if you're interested in winning this, is send me an email with uh, your, uh, well, your name. If, if your name gets drawn, I'll get your address later, but just I need your full name. Um, and uh, one of the other stipulations is I have to be able to mail it to you if you win. There are certain places in this world that uh, right now, well, I live in Canada. Uh, there are certain places in this world right now that I'm not allowed to mail anything to. So if I can mail it to you, I will. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go from there. You know, if there's a problem afterwards, we'll deal with it. So if you're interested in winning this and you're somewhere I can send stuff, send me your email. One thing for you folks who put your name in for the 500 subscriber draw, your name's still in the box. So don't worry about resending it. You're still entered. Um, the only person whose name has been pulled was uh, Peter, the fellow who won the, uh, the digital caliper and that uh, uh, dial indicator at, back at 500. So anyway, it's up for grabs. So what we'll do is we'll give it, uh, this is December 11th today. Uh, as of the moment this video goes up and you see this and you're watching this, contest is open. So if you're interested in winning this, send me an email with your full name and uh, we'll leave it open till well, noon my time on the 23rd. Uh, I live in the Mountain Standard Time Zone in North America. So what I'll do is on the afternoon, well, my afternoon on the 23rd, I'll do the draw and we'll put up a video and whoever wins will uh, let you know. So I got a call a couple months ago from uh, one of the fellows who's part of the Agricultural Museum and uh, Historical Society in uh, Stony Plain, which is a town near where I live. And uh, he sort of caught wind that I have a hobby machine shop and that I putter with things, I like to build things and whatever. And so he gave me a call and was asking me if I could cut him a uh, stub with a taper on it and, the, uh, and thread it. I okay, figured, wasn't sure exactly what it was for until I went out to the Agricultural Museum. And uh, it turns out that they have a 1929 Rumley oil pull tractor in there, and it was torn right apart. Um, I got a couple pictures here. I can show you the state they were at a couple months ago. He, he grabs this little stub, that little stub there. That was actually broken off of the one side. To get it out of the bush, what he did was he just welded a uh, bolt to the one side. This is the bolt that he welded to the side that uh, was broken off just to get it out of the bush. So what he's looking for is a replacement for this that he can weld onto this shank here. Uh, he'll be cutting that off and lining it up and they'll probably be tacking and welding it on the tractor itself to try to get everything lined up. Uh, that way they can make sure everything's oriented properly before they do the final welding. Now one of the tricks here is I need to know what the taper is on this, uh, on this shaft. And my suspicion was that it would be a uh, one and a half inch per foot because that's uh, pretty typical for like a ball joint or something like that. 
Um, I realize this is 1929 before a lot of this, you know, standardized stuff really came into play in different, uh, in different steering systems and such. One handy thing is that I have my buddy Garrett's uh, taper reamer here. This is a ball joint taper reamer, one and a half inches per foot. It lives in my collection here because uh, I'm the one who does the cutting of steering parts when he needs them. What we did here, or what I did, was I took the uh, reamer, found the line of best fit, and tried to get yeah, 1.690, 1.688, 1 1.690, yeah. So it's an inch and a half per foot taper, kind of like the reamer. We're not going to use the reamer for this job, I just use, I'm just using it as a gauge. So this piece has been sitting in my junk stash for a few years now. It was one of the... Uh, leftovers from when I took my machining course some years ago. I have a name on it, whatever. And so at least I know what this is. And uh, what I'm going to do is that gives me enough to chuck up over here, a bit of space toward the chuck to be able to cut a taper. And this diameter here is significantly larger, well, by about you know, 100 thou or so than the threads. So I should be able to get it out of here. Um, I know it's a bit of waste. I know that uh, going for, I should have used an inch and a half material. This is two. I just didn't have any inch and a half, so this is what we'll use. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, you know, you think, okay, well, I could go buy some or whatever, but sometimes you just have to use what you have on hand. So this piece still has a drilled center in the end, which is going to be handy for us. So what I've done is I've set up a dial indicator uh, to measure the stroke of the uh, compound rest as it's coming this way. And I've set up a dial indicator at half its stroke on the outside diameter of the uh, workpiece at center height. The compound is set at 3.5 degrees, which is roughly where we need to be. But let's see if we can get it closer. We're looking for a sixteenth and an inch or an eighth inch and two inches. Okay, we have 50 thousandths worth of travel in one inch. There we go, 37 and a half. We're within a half thou of um, an eighth of an inch over two inches worth of taper. We're going to leave it locked there and go with that. This should put us within a couple thousandths of an inch and a half. Yeah, it's a little warm. One inch 502, one inch 501. I'm going to turn this down to 875. All right, 871. That's a little, got a little bit of warmth to it, but that's okay. One inch 53, still got a bit of heat in it. I think that's going to be acceptable. So 
So I've switched out to a V tool because I want to make a nice little radius in the uh, thread relief cut. I don't want to make it a square corner because that creates stress risers. So that'll be on that end. And on this end I've also got a uh, spot where I can cut my groove this way for a relief. I'm going to cut the end off after because I want to be able to use this part to be able to support when I mill the slot. So we'll cut this off and face it out at the end. There. We're now square to the chuck, meaning square to the work. But let's put on, say, a one thousandth cut. Just to see where we're scratching. That looks to me like a 14 TPI thread. So we should be good to go. Let's take a 4,000th cut. You got to be careful because a couple thousands of feed will make the difference between a good thread and a scrapped part. Okay, before we go too much further, I'm going to pause here. I'm going to get the wires set up and we're going to take a measurement. All right, we are reading 913 thousandths. We're looking for anywhere from 897 to 891 thousandths over the wires. So that means we have, well, 897 to there is about 16 thousandths. So we don't have that much further to go because that only means about 8 thousandths either side. All right. Considering the fact that we're, you know, it's actually 0.8917 is our bottom limit. So that'd be what, 892-ish. Top limit is 897. 895 is where we're gonna stay. I'll try not to drop them. Hooray, thread's done. I've set the large end in one type of V-block I have, and then I used one of the other styles of V-blocks I have on the other end with a one, two, three block and a piece of sheet metal that's just the right thickness so that there's no rocking between the two of them. They're both bedded nice and flat into their V's. Uh, to start with, what I did was to roughly line up this edge here with the table, I used one of the slots and a piece of uh, cold rolled. That got me close. And then um, when I put my dial, indica or dial test indicator on here, I want to make sure that I'm right on the center of this tapered part of the shaft because we're going to indicate that to get that straight. Uh, for that, what I did was I took the uh, height gauge. What I did was I measured the height of the whole assembly here, the V-block and the journal on this end, took half the measurement of the journal on this end from the height and then it was able to take a scratch line all the way across the middle. Got a bit of a scratch there. There's a bit of a scratch there you can see with the uh, into the felt marker. A little bit there. Hopefully you can see it. Maybe not in the camera there, but just due to the lighting. But yeah, I have that there. That's where I'm going to run my uh, dial test indicator because that way I know I'm right on the center of the shaft on the tapered portion. After uh, fiddling with it a little bit there, 
I mean, for all, for all intents and purposes, the balancing in the needle could even be, whoops, me running the table back and forth. But you can see over two inches, it really doesn't deviate from that line much. So this surface now is indicated to be parallel with the x-axis of the machine. Time to bring out the nicotineometer again. As I said before, I don't smoke, but I have found that st stuff to be very, very useful for tool setup. Because I've measured it, and it's about an inch and er, an inch and a half. Yeah, right. It's about a thou and a half in thickness. It's just tearing there. So we zero our quill. Yeah, there we go. I'm looking at my scratch line there, and I'm looking right across the uh, center of the uh, teeth there, and that's pretty much bang on. One thirty, one twenty-nine and a half, good enough. All right, our millwork's done. Nice, I like that. Now I suppose I probably could have left a little stub on the end here to, in order to make it easier to drill the cotter pin hole, but oh well, I'll, ma I'll make do. <laughs> Again, it's fairly late in the evening. I should have thought of that before I did that. Nice. Let's just say I'm kind of glad I didn't uh, video that part and because uh, cutting it off on the bandsaw because it was just a little bit sketchy. Anyway, sometimes things are best left unseen. I'm sure somebody in the safety police would have gotten on my case for how I did it. looks. Now one handy thing about this tool run our lathe backwards and put a chamfer in because I could still sneak by that finger. There we go. Once I see the aluminum rattle I know we're through. So the guys at the Ag Society will be happy to get uh, this part. Uh, apparently the tractor turns out, even though it looked rough on the outside, is a lot better shape on the inside than it appeared to be. And it's going back together faster than they thought. So rather than having till spring, like I was told before, I was uh, asked if uh, I could potentially get this done a little bit sooner. So yeah, like I say, they just I left them a bit extra material here so they can cut it off and do as they wish as far as how much they need to weld. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, if you're at all interested in winning that uh, dial caliper, doesn't matter if you're a subscriber. I, it's cool if you are, but it doesn't matter if you don't have to be a subscriber. If your name gets pulled out of the hat, it's yours. Till next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you then.